It's a Farm Journal for June 28, 2019. Good morning. Welcome to Egret Isle Farm and the Serene Disciple Project, and welcome to the shop. Uh, I don't think this is an area that I have uh, done a farm video yet in, and so here we are. Um, it's an interesting week here at the farm. Uh, we have had a film crew from New Sky Kids. I'll put the link in the description below. Uh, a film crew here all week, and they have been filming a, uh, a new series. And so uh, pretty soon you'll be able to go to New Sky Kids and see Egret Isle Farm uh, <laughs> there. Something about ninjas. I'm, I'm uh, looking forward to seeing it. Uh, also, while I'm thinking about it, I'd like to point out my The History Guy t-shirt. Probably one of the coolest YouTube channels uh, on YouTube. I'll also put the link uh, for The History Guy below. And uh, I would encourage you to go to the History Guy uh, YouTube channel and, uh, and subscribe. A lot of interesting stuff there. Uh, Kay and I sometimes spend the evening uh, just sitting, eating supper on the couch and watching uh, History Guy segments. So uh, good stuff. Well, do, you, do you hear that cheering in the background? <laughs> this is the final day of shooting. And so this is the, I, I, I think, the grand finale of the uh, of the ninja warrior training series that they've been doing so if you hear cheering in the background uh, it's it's ninjas or something <laughs> well we have a we have something to do here in the shop today and while i'm doing it uh, i want to bring you along uh, and uh, and uh, also talk a little bit about the 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 role of the shop in what i have uh, kind of tongue-in-cheek called uh, suburban monasticism that uh, concentrates uh, uh, on the life that I find uh, on the deck or the dock. I've done a video about that uh, here in the shop and in the kitchen and on the porch, uh, representing personal devotion, creative endeavor, uh, radical hospitality, and generous friendship. So uh, come along. Well, let me show you what we're going to do today. This is a Marlin Model 336 uh, lever action uh, 3030 rifle, and it is a beauty. Uh, Marlin came out with this a long time ago. In fact, the design is uh, roughly Civil War era and hasn't changed a lot since then. And I uh, got this got this a few months back and I have really been pleased with it but the problem is that uh, I have a little stud down here and one here and there should be a gun strap connecting uh, those two little studs and there's no there's no gun strap and so today we're in the shop to take care of that we are going to we are going to make a gun strap for this Marlin 336 all right let's get started Okay, this is the leather that we'll be using. Uh, I've been saving this for a special project. Uh, this, by the way, is the, is the Nog Bird. I'll explain him to you some other day, but he oversees most of the projects that I do. Good leather, um, probably not quite a quarter inch thick, uh, maybe, uh, oh, I don't know, a little less than a quarter inch. It's raw leather. 
doesn't have any finish on it, doesn't have any stain on it. You can even see a few of the, the scars and the evidence of the, the life of the cow in it. And so uh, this is what we're going to use. But before we get started on this, we're going to need a pattern. Okay, we have our pattern and it's going to go something like, like this. That goes on there. This will be adjustable here. And uh, anyway, there we go. So let's transfer this to leather. So you might want to refer to the, uh, the video, Start With a Story. Because uh, if you have watched that, you know that I really found that in my time of recovering from uh, significant failure and loss, I discovered that the shop was a critical part of that recovery. And that I found a lot of life in the shop. And I think that is, well, I think there are many reasons for that, but, but I think that when you participate in creative work, it brings you closer to God. And I think, and of course, all I'm giving you is my opinion, and I give you the grace to have your own. Um, but I think there is a kind of focus. There is a kind of, there is a kind of focusless focus to creative work. When I'm doing creative work, if I'm doing it well, um, my mind has to be here. It has to be right here on this leather to get this blade to go down that line. And so there is, there is a real sense of focus here. My mind can't be wandering to the failures, can't be wandering to hopes and dreams, and it, it, it just can't go very far afield. It has to stay here if I'm going to make this blade go straight down this line. And I think that focus is um, really a form of meditation, or it accomplishes, maybe, the same thing that uh, one is trying to accomplish in meditation. I don't know, but I do find that it is, uh, it is something that brings me here here now and being here and now uh, is good because we are so often drug away into there and then whether there and then is in the future or the past so it's good it's good to be here can, can you see the chickens in the background i think it's good for them to be here too <laughs> well, let me get back on this okay here are our leather pieces and we are going to put a nice rounded edge on each one each side of each one that'll give it a little more finished look now i know i just finished saying that one of the advantages or one of the benefits byproducts of being here in the shop is that i have to be here in the shop i can't let my mind wander anywhere else but at the same time, um, there is also a kind of uh, a kind of unfocused aspect to being in the shop. I'm focusing on the work, getting the, the lines right, getting it to look right, getting it how I want it to be, imposing my will on creation, if you will. Uh, but at the same time, I find that my mind sort of disconnects and hours pass. I can start in the shop and, and intend to be here 20 or 30 minutes until I have to go do something else. And then if I'm not careful, if I'm not looking at my, at my watch, I find that two or three hours have passed uh, rather blissfully. I enjoy this. And I think that's why, in that time of recovery, I think that's why there was so much life here. I was worried about so much. 
that being able to come into the shop or into the studio to paint, which I also do, or working over at the lathe, I was able to disconnect from all of that. For that time that I was there, I really wasn't worried. I wasn't worried about what was going to happen tomorrow or next week. I was only worried about what was happening right here in my hands. And I think that's also a form of spiritual discipline. To be focused right here and right now and to remain that way for some time. I, you know, you, you can get there, you can get there sitting in meditation. But I think another way to get there, maybe if meditation is not your thing or it seems too Eastern or something, um, then spend some time in creative, creative work. It's a good thing. Shh, I just heard the producer shout, quiet on the set. <laughs> Actually, quiet on the set out there. It's, it's wild. Quiet on the set. Okay, still trying to be quiet on the set, but we must move on. I'm using a quarter inch leather punch here for my holes could use something a little smaller for the fasteners that I'll be using later, but uh, I think that uh, this will give me a little more wiggle room to match up the hole. Okay, now I want this to have a little color to it, and so I'm going to wet this down. That way it'll open up the pores of the leather. And then going to put a little color on it. The gun is a nice even brown and so I'm going to put uh, I'm going to put a color called timber brown on it. It's not going to change the color all that much but I think you'll see when it dries it's got a very nice sheen to it. Now there is the picture of Precarious. Can you see the chop saw with the chicken right underneath the blade? Ah, the bliss of ignorance. <laughs> okay, we're using Uncle Mike's Detachable Super Swivel today. About 10 bucks from Walmart. That slips through there. And then we're using what uh, what are called Detroit screws. And so uh, we'll line up all of our holes like so. Turn it over, find the screw. It goes there. Screw it in. And that may. Now I do have this. 1921 silver dollar that has been made into a kind of a medallion left over from another project and so just for kicks I am going to put that right there. Okay so there is a gun strap adjustable uh, with a silver dollar medallion no less. <laughs> So will it win any awards? No, probably not. But does it need to? No, not really. But it didn't exist before. I mean, the leather existed before. It came from a cow, which came from another cow from another cow. I didn't create out of nothing. Uh, but I didn't have a gun strap before, and now I have a gun strap. And there is satisfaction in that. And it will hold my gun on my back while I go hunting in the woods back there. And really, that's all it needs to do. And I made it here in the shop. And so you could think about creative endeavor, especially, especially craft kind of creative endeavor where you're starting with materials and ending with something. You could think about that like meditation that produces uh, creation. And maybe, maybe that's how God does it. So what do you do for creative endeavor? Do you paint?
paint? Do you do woodwork? Do you do leather work? I do all of those here in the shop. Uh, or do you, do you do something else? I suggest that maybe you should consider making creative endeavor part of your mental, psychological, spiritual practice, whatever you call it. I think it's a good thing. Well, that's it. See you next time. Well, I think that's enough for today. As always, if you like this video, click that like button, share this on your social media, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and consider becoming a Patreon supporter. Pretending to be asleep? Bing. Bing. <laughs>